Hi, I'm Pry Greg, and today I want to talk to you about meditation. I just received a photograph from a friend, and it was a photo of a very healthy meal. And so I sent him a message asking him about his meditation, reminding him that meditation is healthy for the mind. He thanked me for the reminder. But honestly, I'm, I'm amazed sometimes that people can't find the time or they can't make the effort to meditate. I'm always hearing people say, I'm too busy to meditate. I don't have time to meditate. And I think if you were sick, you'd find time to go to the doctor. We worry about our health. We see people in the West more and more watching their diet, working out, going to the gym, jogging, running, all of these things for a healthy body. But nobody seems to be taking care of their mind. I was talking to, to some American buddies one day and I was saying I was quite amazed at how open and honest Americans are about visiting their psychoanalyst. And it struck me that this is something that we shouldn't need to be doing all the time. Why do we need to go and pay big bucks to these psychoanalysts? Most of the problems that we have, we have because we're not mindful. And we're not mindful because we don't sit down to meditate. Everybody's running around here, running around there. You speak to some people and you ask them about, well, what do you do? What time do you start work? How long do you work for? What do you do when you get after work? People seem to find the time to go clubbing. They find the time to go to the pub. They find the time to play sport on the weekend. But why can't they find the time to meditate? Somebody said to me one day they were worried about meditation because they'd heard that some people wind up in mental institutions as a result of meditation. Well, there may be some truth that there have been a few people who, during the course of a meditation retreat, have had a mental breakdown. But nine times out of ten, we discover that that person is already on medication and has stopped taking it. Well, I'm quite sure that if the doctors prescribed medication, it's possibly needed. I'm not one of these meditation teachers that tells you to stop taking the medicine. I wouldn't dream of doing that. But I'll guarantee you that there are a lot more people at mental institutions because they didn't meditate than there are people who were there because they did meditate. Sometimes we just have to wake up and smell the coffee. It's good to have a healthy body. There's nothing wrong with having a healthy body. But we really do need to sit down and start meditating. Tonight at the temple, we were chanting. We started chanting at about 6.30. And we finished just before 8 o'clock. And I was having a bit of a laugh about this because in my previous temple, our chanting morning and night added up to roughly 24 minutes. And our meditation added up to about 14 hours. They saw the importance and the urgency of meditation. I would want to urge each and every one of you Find the time. 
get up 30 minutes earlier to do some meditation. Turn the TV off 30 minutes earlier when you go to bed at night time to do some meditation. The time to meditate is now. There's so many people spend their time worrying about all the wrong things. People asking questions like, what colour was the skin of Lord Buddha? How tall was Lord Buddha? Who cares? These questions won't get you to Nibbana. These questions will just confuse you. We don't know what colour Lord Buddha's skin was. We don't know how tall he was, how much he weighed. If they were important, he would have told us. It would have been written down on the suttas. Chanting. It's nice, but it's not necessary. You won't attain the Dharma through chanting. Lord Buddha sat down underneath the body tree and he didn't chant. He didn't read suttas. He meditated. And as a result of the meditation, he became the awakened one, the fully enlightened one. If we practice meditation earnestly, we can attain enlightenment in this very lifetime. Often people here in Thailand don't even try to do that. And if you ask why not, they say it's too difficult. It's too lofty a thing to aim for. And so they try and be good. They give most generously. They chant. And they aim for a rebirth in one of the heavenly realms working on the theory that they'll stick around and wait for the next Buddha to arrive. The problem with that is they don't know how long they'll remain in the heavenly realm. And they don't know what their next destination would be. And it'd be a pity that these people who are starting to practice wound up in a lower realm and never got to meet with the next Buddha. How many eons, how many katas will they continue to wander in the cycle of samsara? Through personal meditation, at the very least, you could find yourself attaining such a panihood, no more than seven rebirths before attaining the Dharma. So, I would implore each and every one of you that don't have time, make time. You don't have time, not to find time.